silence. There is no such thing as silence, of course, unless it's in death. What I mean is, we didn't talk, we didn't move, we waited. The siren still vibrated inside my head, and I looked at the face of my mother, and I looked at the face of my father, and I was certain that the sound was frightening. But then, the all clear. This sound had significance too. Yes, this sound changed things. It was a happy sound. It meant we could smile again. So you see. That sort of explains it all, don't you think? Blue veils and golden sands, a play about Delia Derbyshire, written by Martin Wade. Musical consultant Elizabeth Parker, with Sophie Thompson as Delia Derbyshire. Coventry born, Coventry bred, Coventry blitzed. I might be going back there next week if I can oh, summon up the courage. I've been invited to a don't laugh, a Doctor Who convention. <laughs> My God! The thing is about needing the courage. I've how shall I put it? De-socialise myself. Yes, I live alone. No music, no job. Haven't worked since what? Eighty-five. I read. I listen to the radio. I have a glass or two of wine. No one comes to visit me. I don't allow it. Don't let them in. It's a very quiet sort of life, as a rule. But recently, something happened. Oh hi! Is that Delia Derbyshire of Radiophonic Workshop fame? Yes. My name's Peter Kember. I make electronic music. Oh, really? I'm a big fan of your work. Oh heavens! <laughs> wow! <laughs> I wondered, perhaps, if we might meet up. I was a bright child. I was a musical child. When I was eight, my parents decided at last that they must put me to the piano, which made it seem like a feat of endurance or some bizarre kind of auto da fe. But I was never interested in performing, not on the piano. I was interested in sound, the effect of sound, the meaning of sound. I was a bright child, golly! I was bright. Grammar school, a place at Cambridge. Me, a working class girl. Well, upper working class, reading maths at Cambridge. I mean, I, I thought I'd done pretty well, really. But my parents never seemed that impressed. So I constantly felt that I wasn't worth anything, and I was constantly trying to prove that I was. Recognition—that's what I wanted. But not, I decided, for my maths. I've received a note. Do sit down. Thank you. Apparently, you wish to give up mathematics. Well, I I've decided that maths won't continue to be my main area of study. Have you indeed? I wouldn't have minded carrying on, but a, I'm not at all sure how good the teaching is, and b, I'm I'm very interested in doing music. Oh, I see, music. That's your current preference, is it? To be honest, I don't regard music as a great change of direction for me. Do you not? The relationship between maths and music has, has long been recognised. The ancient Greeks knew all about it. Pythagoras, an incredible chap. And then, of course, there are Fibonacci's numbers, nature's patterns and sequences, the number of seed spirals in a sunflower, for instance. They're precisely the same numbers that you get in musical <sighs> intervals and progressions. Thinking about it, my year of mathematics would have been the perfect start to a study of music if only the teaching had been better. I'd be happy to come over. I live pretty near. By the way, how did you get my phone number? Well, I rang directory inquiries and asked if there were any Delia Derbyshires in Coventry. I discovered you were born there, like me. And I was given the number, and I rang it, and a woman answered, and I said, "Is that Delia Derbyshire of Radiophonic Workshop fame?" 
And she said, no, that Delia Derbyshire lives in Northampton. What a wonderful story. Please tell me it's true. It was tough at Cambridge. Not the work. Keeping solvent. My parents, well, they were supposed to give me a certain amount each year, but it never appeared somehow, so I used to sell things to survive. If I got a present, I'd keep it in its box and sell it. And even now, so stupid, really. Oh, what I liked about Cambridge was this. There were people, if you looked for them, who were a bit like me, or how I wanted to become. People whose eyes and ears weren't closed, whose minds weren't closed. Cambridge, oh, it gave me a passion. So... Interested in a career in sound? Yes, abstract sound especially. Abstract sound? I'm very keen on the notion of the meaning of sound, its effect, the way it can provoke the senses and encourage states of mind. Mm -hmm. High frequencies, for instance, they're very stressful, whereas low frequencies are warm, basic, fleshy. I see. Every sound influences the rhythm of body and mind, and it influences the mind most particularly if the mind is open. Right. So, acoustics. Ah, deaf aids. Research and development. Deaf aids. Oh, and uh, depth sounding. So, Miss Derbyshire, I hope that's useful. I bought this place after my mother died. There was all her stuff and dad's, and I refused to throw it away. Not on account of sentiment, golly, no. It's just that I find it almost impossible to throw anything away. And so I thought it would be cheaper to buy a house than keep it all in storage. And now I live alone. I read... I take snuff, I drink a glass or two of wine. When I have to go out, I decant the wine into a plastic bottle and I put on my Bob Dylan cap. You know, I had a fine head of hair once. Red, beautiful. Oh, dear. I put on my cap and my poncho, cover everything up, and then I can face the world, more or less. I was a decent enough looking thing when I was young, but the ravages of time, I suppose, and drink, yes. And having a mastectomy doesn't do a lot for a girl's figure. My God, the way I was treated, shameful, horrific. I never want to go to a hospital ever again. Delia, can you hear me? I tried to get a job at Decca Records, but women aren't allowed in their studios. At the BBC, however... Delia! Yes? The Shostakovich, second movement. Yes? There's an extract Michael wants, but he can't remember where it is. Da 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 Lots of percussion, snare drum, cymbals, timpani. Snare drum, cymbals, ooh. Is, is, is this it? Good Lord, how did you do that? It's simple. You just hold the disc up to the light and you can tell roughly what the music's doing from the look of the grooves. A useful skill for a studio manager, particularly one who's working on record review. But I'd rather not work on record review forever. I want to make music of my own. This building... It used to be a roller skating palace, but now it belongs to the BBC and somewhere along here, so I'm told. Yes, room 13. The BBC's radiophonic workshop. From what I understand, it creates sounds that aren't on disc already, special sounds as required for particular programmes. Drama, for instance. Hello? I thought I'd pay it a visit. Golly! I had this picture in my mind, radiophonic workshop, a beautiful spacious sound laboratory with thoroughly modern decor, chromium plated equipment, the very latest technology, but well, look, 
a bank of test bench oscillators, quite clearly past their prime. A mixing desk which must be an antique. A grievously battered harmonium. The entrails of a piano. Bells, tin cans, bottles. Oh, it's paradise. Visitors, please note, my real living room's the saloon bar of the Rose and Crown. Well, I couldn't possibly allow anyone in the house. Too appalling. I just can't. <gasps> so stupid, really. I have to tell you, sometimes... Oh, hiya. Is that Delia Derbyshire of Radiophonic Workshop fame? Sometimes, when the phone rings... You'll think I'm as mad as a box of frogs, but sometimes I think I know what sort of call it's going to be, as if I'd had a premonition about it. My name's Peter Kember. I make electronic music. So if it's a bad premonition, I don't pick the phone up. This call, though, this call, I've decided, will be fine. Oh, hiya. Of course, he'll have to meet me in the pub. What I don't understand. I mean, there's so little of my stuff. I heard a few tracks on a Radiophonic Workshop album. Oh, yes. Doctor Who, inevitably. Also a piece called Delian Mode. Delian Mode, yes. Oh, do you like that? I think it's amazing. You do? Oh, that's wonderful. I'm... Well, I'm tickled pink. I, I really am. I, I'm, I'm afraid I, I've lost touch music-wise. Well, every way wise, these last 20 years or so, I've, I've been out of it, totally. I, I listened to that Radio 3 programme, um, what's it called? But I'm, I'm afraid the name Peter Kemba... I'm otherwise known as Sonic Boom. Sonic Boom? Oh, no, you must lend me one of your records. You know what they say about the radiophonic workshop? Tell me. It can induce long-term neurological and psychological damage as a result of overexposure to electronic sounds. But in your case... Mad already. <laughs> no one volunteers for that place. You have to be ordered to go. It's the equivalent of being sent to Coventry. Look, I know Coventry. Can't be that bad. Anyway, it's just a temporary attachment. Three months. You'll regret it. All they do there is make silly noises, major blood knock stomach and so on. <gasps> It won't have the remotest connection with music. He's right, of course. They're not musicians here. Golly, no. But there are such possibilities with this place. All this crude, magnificent machinery. And they have tape recorders, too, which I've never been allowed to use before. But I won't tell anyone what I want to do. The words music and composing shan't pass my lips. I'll just quietly infiltrate the system. Work under cover of darkness. This is the sound made by a valve oscillator. A very old, hand-me-down, out-of-commission valve oscillator, which was never intended to make musical sounds. But you can tune it to a particular frequency so that it produces the notes you require. And there are various other electronic effects. An echo device, for instance, which you have to turn on the day before you want to use it can't demonstrate that and of course you can make natural sounds too which can be treated and altered out of all recognition decomposed you might say and so you have your sounds your atmospheres distortions effects produced by manipulation and repitching filtering recording the sounds at different speeds running them backwards repeatedly superimposing them upon themselves and once your sounds are on tape, you can edit the tape like you edit film and you can create a perfectly orchestrated soundscape. And the end result of this process, you'll probably think, has just as much right to be called a symphony as Beethoven's Fifth. But you won't say that to your colleagues. Uh, Delia? Yes? I've heard somewhere that the noise of the TARDIS 
<laughs> you know, uh, when it dematerialises. I've heard that the basic sound that was used was a key being scraped along the strings of a piano. Is that true? I made it to the Doctor Who convention, along with numerous time travellers, a few Daleks, and several sad actors hoping to revitalise their careers. Peter Kemper and his girlfriend, they managed to sneak in the darlings to give me moral support. And I had a little bit to drink as well, which helped. And my fifth question, Delia... Yes? ...is this. Ron Grainer wrote the theme tune. Of course, we all yeah. know that. <laughs> and the tune was realised, I think is the term, by the Radiophonic Workshop. That is, by you. Yes. But I've heard somewhere... Yes, I've heard it too. ...that Ron Grainer was so impressed with what you'd done that he wanted you to have a co-credit. But the BBC refused. And you weren't allowed a royalty either. Yes, well, Ron Grainer... Oh, I, I, I suppose I've, I've told this story a thousand times, but, dear Ron... You know, he, he was such a lovely man, and he had such a beautiful, open mind. Open? Oh, God, yes. It's so open, it's empty. Go on. Where was I? Uh, you were getting back to first principles, Pythagoras. Oh, yes, Pythagoras, yes. You see, he discovered that music is numbers made audible. He knew about the link between musical intervals and numerical ratios. Good man. And it's also thought that he put forward the notion of the harmony of the spheres and of listening to music as a sort of process of purification. And also, very wisely, he forbade the eating of beans. <laughs> what did you say the series was called? Doctor Who. It's for kids. About time travel. Oh, right. There's this old fellow in it and his chums and their spaceship's a police phone box. I've done a sort of score for you, but I don't know how you'll manage with it. Not unless you hire some instrumentalists. Instrumentalists? Oh, good grief! We're not allowed them. It was a lovely score. Great tune, clever rhythm, and he'd written lots of beautiful things on the page, like wind clouds and bubbles. Sweeps, swoops and glides through space and time. I really didn't have a clue how I'd manage with it. There was no multi-tracking in those days, of course. But I remember spending quite a lot of time with the workshop's various oscillators. Getting feedback. Achieving howls and reverberations. Doing Ron's swoops and glides. Cutting the recorded sound into different pieces of tape and then splicing them up together. And as for the rhythm backing, a single string on a piece of wood is all that's needed. But the sound of the plucking, it has to be trimmed and treated. It's two o'clock. Two a.m., I mean. Being here at night, it's much to be preferred. At night, there's no need to fight over the equipment. And the phone doesn't ring. And you don't have to listen to gossip and complaints about disastrous love affairs. Everyone's gone home, except the little man at the front desk, but he's probably asleep. And the lights have dimmed, and there's no noise from outside. No footfall. No drone of a car engine. Just me. Thinking. Working. Any sounds. They're mine. So... This rhythm backing. Once I've got it perfected, it has to be put on a tape loop so that the sequence comes round again and again. And when a tape loop starts growing, golly, one inevitably has to take it out of the workshop and down the corridor, which is another reason why it's useful to operate at night. Down the corridor. Wow, this must be the longest loop ever. I've reached the ladies' lounge And I remember, when the whole thing was finished, I phoned Ron and he came round to the workshop and I, I didn't want to talk about Pythagoras or anything. I just wanted him to listen to the music. And I can see him now, sitting on a high stool, with his head slightly to one side. He looked at me. He seemed shocked. Good Lord! Did I really write that? Yeah. 
Right. Whoops. Mind how you go. This is my little place above the flower shop. Excuse the slight mess. I have an analytical mind. Oh, damn. Oh, and I have a totally disorganised flat. I suppose my aim in life, since life's too short, is to perfect a simple way of living so that I can devote myself to work, to creating beautiful sounds. So the motto is, avoid cleaning and tidying at all costs. After I've been working through the night. Oh, now that's a beautiful sound. I find I have to come down, loosen up. Oh. Wine bottles, I should inform you, are a most useful part of my musical equipment. Most music these days, oh my God, is so limited and conventional, so dull. The same old instruments, the same old modes and rhythms and harmonies. We need new music. New music and open minds, yes. <laughs> I'll drink that. Well, I'm flattered. I'm tickled pink, I really am. A track called Delia Derbyshire. Gosh. I brought you some other CDs too, so you can get an idea. There are a lot of electronic music guys, you know, who I'm sure must have listened to your music. Golly. Aphex Twin, Orbital, Adenta X. Right. You haven't heard of them. I told you, I've, I've been out of touch. Uh, anyway, thank you very much for these. I, I'm afraid I, I won't be able to play them. Why not? I haven't got a CD player. Oh? Uh... And I can't afford to buy one. Huh? Well, you know, a uh, basic boombox. Boombox? It wouldn't set you back more than 40 quid. Oh, really? But if you can't manage that, no, I... No. <laughs> you can always borrow mine. No, that's okay. I'll buy a boombox. <laughs> what I've been trying to do here... Ooh, that's quite nice. ...is to get a sound picture of the Sahara Desert. It's for a World About Us program, looking at the Tuareg people who live by bartering, who pitch their tents at night and then move on. And I needed a wonderfully evocative effect. The shimmering heat haze of the sun and the strand of riders on their camels. Blue veils, golden sands. So I recorded the sound of a standard tatty BBC metal lampshade being hit with a stick and I removed the initial part of the sound, the hard percussive bit, and kept the reverberation. I was proud of Blue Veils and the sound treatment I did for the anger of Achilles in 64. That was good. And there was inventions for radio, recordings of people talking about dreams they'd had or their thoughts about God or death. And their words were repeated and rearranged, presented as a kind of sound collage with electronic backing. And it was frightening and suffocating. My clothes were dragging me back. It was all around me, this water. I didn't like it. And I began to feel very frightened. It seemed to go down and down and down. My clothes were dragging me back. It was very dark and very deep. The sea is very deep. Those pieces gave me pleasure. They showed Delia in true Delian mode. But there was a problem. Some of the workshop stuff that I was perfectly happy with was rejected as being unsuitable. To Miss Delia Derbyshire, regarding your music for the science and health series for schools titled Discovering Our Bodies, it seems you are not aware that the idea behind the programmes was to explain sex, not to sell it. And on the other hand, a lot of work which seemed to find favour was to my ears. Heavens, so frivolous. Silly. A sig tune with door knockers for some local radio listen to the people show. Oil well noises for the Arabic radio service. Program on car maintenance, all so utterly, utterly trivial that I began to wonder, is it worth it? <coughs> 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 
when the phone rings and I decide to answer it and I hear the voice, the intonation, the rise and fall. Well, it's psychoacoustics, the effect of sound on the soul, the effect of the soul on sound. In Peter Kemba's case, for instance, as soon as he started speaking, I knew he was a kindred spirit. Hello, Peter. Hi, Delia. Have you got a boombox yet? Oh, yes. It was a lovely present for myself. Thank you for suggesting it. But I haven't heard your CD yet. Oh, that's OK. The machine's still in its box. Just in case I have to sell it. As I was saying, things weren't quite as they should have been at the workshop. So I began to do other stuff as well. I became part of a little company making electronic music for the commercial field. Or trying to. It was based at a studio belonging to Peter Zinoviev, the other Peter in my life. Russian aristocrat, brilliant man. And in addition to the commercial work, we did a few electronic music performances. And so, gradually, I began to find that there was a world outside. Hello? Delia Derbyshire, it's Tony Newley here. Oh, Tony Newley. We've never met. No, I, I, I don't but think I'm so. looking for a change of musical direction. Oh, yes. Can't stand still, you get run over, right? Right. So, I thought, go electronic. Vocal material, but with a freaky backing. Something a bit bloopy, squiffy. You know what I mean? So, how about it? Well, golly. I'm told you're the main man. Are you? <laughs> Coming! Bloopy squiffy, bloopy squiffy, turning newly. Hi, Delia. Hi. Delia, I thought your tune was far out. Oh. I didn't ask for a tune. I. Oh. oh, sorry. Mind how you go. Excuse the slight mess. I just said freaky noises. That's right, but I can do tunes if I want. You're damn right you can. Yeah, write a few more like that. We'll have you out of this dingy little place. Oh, but I'm rather... Anyway, I use the freaky noises and the tune. Did you get my tape? Yes, thanks. Ah, uh, you didn't like it, eh? You thought, nasty man, you thought. I've written this groovy melody. It was meant to be kind of pure and innocent. And then Mr Pervy Newley comes along and drools all over it. Stuff about watching girls in their mini skirts, their knees winking in the rain. You've turned it into a dirty raincoat song. The greatest dirty raincoat song ever. I'll use your phone if I may. We need to book a multi-track studio. When you're watching floating by and those little mini skirts, little pink knees winking away, wild air lolloping about in the wind, and those mad earrings and the clown face. The sixties. Oh golly. That was my time. I was there. Mm. I was swinging years before London managed it. Fun, fun, fun. Some success. Not at the Radiophonic Workshop. Not in terms of recognition. Good God, no. But outside, music for the theatre, music for film, music for a fashion show. I worked with Tony Richardson, worked with Peter Hall, performed at the Roundhouse with Paul McCartney, worked with Yoko Ono. She made this film about one of her events, wrapping the lions in Trafalgar Square. I did the soundtrack for it while she slept on my floor. And I helped on White Noise, an LP of quirky numbers set in a space dimension. Became something of a cult item, I believe. Mm. I met dozens and dozens of famous people. The 60s. Yes, that was my time. And afterwards, life was oh, never quite the same. Another day at the Radiophonic Sweatshop. I'll leave that. I don't think it's good news. You know, I feel burnt out. Used up. Oh, that's better. And the lack of recognition, that really doesn't help. The fact that all my music's credited to the workshop and I never get a penny in royalties. Not for Doctor Who, not for anything. 
and they sort of pool your stuff, the good stuff included, and they fish it out for some utterly inappropriate drama series or documentary. I, I hate that. And also, the creative people at the BBC, where are they? They've all disappeared, gunned down or fled, and taking their place at these absurdly well-paid accountants on a paradoxical search for economies and talentless producers who have never-ending meetings. Oh! Yes. Delia, can't talk long in the middle of a meeting. Oh. But I have some news about Doctor Who. Oh, don't tell me. Trouble with the Cybermen again? <laughs> the programme's celebrating its 10th anniversary this year. Oh, God, is it? So we thought it was time the theme had a thorough revamp. Revamp? Same tune, obviously. But a really fresh, new, up-to-date version. On one of those synthesizers. tried, but I can't make it sound any good. Of course, I may not have tried that hard. Compared, I mean, with the effort I put into the original version. I don't know. What was wrong with the original version? <sighs> I'm not a Luddite. Heavens, I was using a synthesizer, the VCS3, which Peter Zinoviev developed before they ever got one at the workshop. But the trouble with the synthesizer is this. People have the idea that it sort of makes all the sounds itself, without any fuss or bother, and very, very fast. Which suits the sad spirit of the age quite perfectly. No time anymore, so I'm told. No time to plan, no time for second thoughts, no time to make it right, no time to let it grow. <laughs> You see? This is rubbish. Rubbish. Maybe, maybe I ought to be getting out of here. Maybe Delia Darbish's ten-year attachment to the radiophonic workshop should be terminated. Yes. But once I'm unattached, what then? It seems to me... It seems to me that life's buggered. Humanity's buggered. And anyway, why bother? To put it plainly, why bloody bother? I'm not in tune with all this money thing. Everyone wants to make money these days. Me, I, I just want to make beautiful sounds and to be given what I've earned. I don't want to squabble. Beautiful sounds. Yes, that's all. Not feeling that bright today. Very heavy and lethargic. Pain in the gut. But I tell myself it's not in the gut, it's in the mind. You asked about the missing years. Well, there's not much to say, really. They went missing. I went missing. I quit the BBC. I quit music. I decided, a little less than half-jokingly, that I'd like to become the English equivalent of a camel rider in the Sahara Desert. Blue-veiled, travelling, pitching my tent, selling my wares, and after a day or two, well, a year or two, moving on. I journeyed north. I wanted nothing to do with London anymore. I went towards the border, rented a house built of stones from Hadrian's Wall. And I worked in a bookshop too. And for a while I did almost manage the nomadic thing. I had a rule, which I'd recommend to anyone. As soon as your home becomes impossibly dirty and cluttered, move on. I've not been that unhappy. I, I just wish, uh, looking back, uh, some recognition, proper recognition, oh, it would have been nice. He phones me up. He plays something he's been working on. 
and I listen, and I like it, and I tell him so. But he says... Tell me what you really think. So I do, and gradually I find I'm getting back on track. I mean, as Peter's always saying, things haven't changed that much. My clothes were dragging me back. It was all around me, this water. I Sampling, for instance, which everyone's into now. I was doing that when I was in the radiophonic workshop, but with tape. My clothes were dragging me back. It was very dark and very deep. The sea is very deep. And really, a lot of stuff these days, Peter's and the more commercial side, the ideas are similar to mine. It's the techniques that are different. That's all. And the techniques that are being used, the different computer programs, for instance, gosh, some of them are brilliant. And so, as I say, I'm starting my comeback. Delia. Yes, Peter. How about you and me doing a workshop together? A workshop? Oh, golly. <laughs> oh, golly. Yes. But we won't call it a radiophonic workshop. It was fun, the workshop. Well, it was hell to begin with. My God, I was nervous. A tanker load of red wine was required. But once I got going, great, incredible, so happy and I tell you it's really lovely to hear about these young musicians with wonderful names who cite Delia Derbyshire as an influence <laughs> also I'm making plans I want to create beautiful sounds again because the way I see it if what I did all those years ago is at last being accepted this means that after the missing years everyone's sort of caught up and the stuff I'll do from now on people will know what to make of it yes so everything will be fine everything will be fun 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 <laughs> I've been remembering, without trying, scenes suddenly appear in my mind. My childhood, for instance, the blitz, the sound of the siren. It had a meaning, I, I knew that much. And after the siren, sitting, waiting for the all clear. I, I still don't feel quite right. I ought to be busily getting on with things, so many plans. But I suppose that after all this time, the alcohol consumption, abuse they call it nowadays, has taken its toll. That reminds me... Oh. If I ever manage to persuade myself, against all the odds, to go into hospital, I must pack a bottle or two in my bag. Listen to that. Each sound has a meaning. Each time the phone rings, the sound has its own significance. In this particular case, an intonation of mortality. I know who's phoning. I know what he's thinking. Delia, please. You've got to let someone have a look at you. Promise me you will. Well, I'm not quite right. I'll admit that much. I'll get my bottle ready. Everything's like a dream. Peter came in yesterday, but I found I couldn't speak to him. The mouth opened, but no sound. A drink would go down well. Wine, I mean. But some vindictive nurse. <sighs> Everything's muddled. Past, present, all confused. And whether there's any future, that's not certain. I feel I ought to pray, but I haven't done that for years and years, and I rather feel it would smack of 
cowardice, desperation to start now. I'd make some sacred music if I could. The truth is, people hear, but they don't listen. Yes, in one ear and... To listen, you must open your mind. Make the spirit receptive. The truth is... Listen. Listen. There is no such thing as silence, unless it's in death. There are sounds from space, signals from distant stars, electrons in motion. And there are sounds from within. The sound of one's heartbeat, one's pulse. Yes, though it needs a little amplification at the moment. I don't know if I believe in God, but I believe in his music. Peter was right, of course. No great work from Delia Derbyshire in her sunset years. The grand plans were so grand that I never got anything done at all. But he's always telling me. He told me again when he came to my bedside about people of his generation into electronic music. They know about me. They've been inspired by me. My music's in their psyche, it's in their blood. And that, you see, that's what I needed. That's all I wanted, to get some recognition, to know that despite everything, it was worthwhile. Yes, yes. And then... Silence. There is no such thing, of course, unless... So, I must lie here, waiting, not knowing, waiting for the all-clear. <laughs> 